More than just a business show, we are economics unbound. Good evening. Tonight, we scale a mountain of debt. The focus, state-owned enterprises. Nana and I ask the question, could the nation's SOE debt crisis lead ultimately to the state being unable to service its debt? Could this lead to the nation needing the assistance from the International Monetary Fund, for example? The state-owned enterprises are owned by all of us. South Africa's more than 57 million people. These assets that we own have become a drag on growth. They creak, literally creak, under a weight of debt, corruption, old-fashioned funding models, and excessive overstaffing. Hello, Nana. What do you think about Yet this? the SOE debt crisis has come to a head in an election year. Political support for job cuts is non-existent. Take a look at this short insert on the history of the SOE problem. South Africa has at least 700 state-owned entities. The 10 biggest borrowers include ESCOM, Transnet, SAA, SABC, the Post Office, Prasa. These account for 95% of government's contingent liabilities. A liability means that if the SOE defaults on a loan or fails to pay the creditor, this debt then becomes the obligation of the government to rescue and to bail out of the company. If all is well, we pay nothing as people. But if things go badly as they have now, we the people, ordinary taxpayers, through the state, must pay for the mess. This graph shows just how much we've doled out in bailouts just this fiscal year. When the state absorbs the debt, its own debt to the GDP ratio is ratcheted up, making the people's balance sheet potentially unsustainable. This could lead to a downgrade of sovereign credit rating by leading rating agencies. This is because the credit rating agencies that tell lenders whether we are good for the money as a nation doubt our ability to sustainably service our own debt. A recent NetBank report says that if our debt to GDP ratio moves to 60% of GDP due to the bailouts to the SOEs, then we are in perilous and scary terrain. According to the NetBank report, 60% is a critical tipping point in our state's debt profile. BRICS countries carry debt to GDP ratio north of 70% on average, while developed countries are bursting through the 100% cent level. Emerging markets like South Africa hover in the region of 55% debt to GDP. But the recent bailouts have pushed us close to 60%, with the medium-term budget estimate measuring the figure at 55.8%. It will be more difficult to service these kinds of elevated debt levels, especially with our growth level bubbled just above 0%. The nation's regrowth level make our increased debt unsustainable. With the debt being expressed as a percentage of GDP, if we were growing any faster, the forecast would look rosier, but we are not. If the debt spirals, then we may fall into a sovereign debt crisis and need international monetary fund bailout, much the same as Greece, Portugal and Spain. Now, state-owned companies pose very serious risks to the, to the fiscal framework. This is according to Finance Minister Tito Mbenweni delivering his maiden budget speech yesterday. He said government is facing a deterioration in the financial position of state-owned enterprises, with some struggling to stay afloat without financial assistance. Mbenweni says requests for funding were received from ESCOM, SAA, SABC and Danel. ESCOM will receive $23 billion per year over the next three years. Government says it is talking to the SABC to see how the public broadcaster can be assisted with the $6.8 billion it requested. It says the state-owned national carrier SAA will require an additional $4 billion facility for 2019 and 2020. Earlier this week, the chief executive of the airline, um, that's Vuyani Jahana announced that SAA would be restructured. Well, yesterday we spoke to the chief executives of these SOEs and to the Minister of Communications, and this is what they all had to say. 
SAA has got three markets, domestic, international and regional. What we are doing, we are structuring the business units within SAA, no new companies, but specifically bringing more accountability, putting together teams that are going to be dedicated to drive our growth across the continent, at the same time making sure that we, we continue to lead in the domestic market and also give greater accountability for profit and loss accountability and commercial delivery to the international markets. 70% of the revenues of SAA are coming from outside South Africa. That means that the, the structure, the governance, the process of taking decision must be more inclusive. That's what that's the change we're putting in place so that all of us are accountable for results. It comes at the right time, you know. Of course, we'll have been even more excited if, if it's more, but in all fairness, 23 billion uh, means that uh, we'll reduce our debt servicing costs by about 65, 70% or so. Debt servicing costs at ASCOM is about 32 billion a year. So if we get this 23 billion, it means we'll be, sa we'll be saving about 23 on the servicing debt. That money will then be used in key issues such as the maintenance of power stations. It comes at the right time. So everybody was worried, what's going to happen with SABC? And we're happy to say we're going home happy, baby. But on top of that, the minister spoke to a crucial fact of making sure that we work together in ensuring that we issue the policy directive in terms of spectrum allocation. And therefore that means that if we're going to give you spectrum, as much as you're going to pay us, we're going to make sure that you have obligations and data has to fall. When is the bailout for the SABC coming? Definitely you can't put in terms of the days because that's the responsibility of Treasury. What we have about the minister included in his speech. Tans, do you know what moral hazard is? <laughs> oh, Nana baby, I do know what moral hazard is, but do go ahead, share your thoughts with me. Well then, Tans, you know that this means that you've been deemed far too big to fail, meaning your failure has a domino effect and could have the whole system crumbling down. So what happens? We bail you out, no matter what. But because you've become addicted to the bailouts, you mismanage, knowing full well that, well, you'll be bailed out no matter what. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> naughty, naughty indeed. I am now joined by Mr. Godongwana, who is the chairperson of the ANC's Economic Transformation Committee. Tell me, Mr. Godongwana, what do you think of moral hazard? Look, um, that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad thing, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure in what context are we referring about it now. Well, we're talking about moral hazard in the context of an, a, an institution that anticipates that it can mismanage in perpetuity and continue to mismanage because it's too big to fail. If it fails, there will be systemic risk. It'll have a domino effect throughout the economy and therefore the state and the people cannot allow the asset to, to fail and therefore it creates this moral question. Are the people through their funding and through their use of their taxes to constantly bail out organizations not incentivize what is morally wrong? If we are referring to ESCO, maybe you are. And I'm referring to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> including SABC. Perhaps. Let me, I mean, to start with ESCO, you will recall that ESCO at some point has been making some profits. And therefore, we must ask ourselves what went wrong and begin to address that. And, and, and in this context, I would imagine that we then became lax on management and it led to this kind of problems we're having. The same applies with SAA. Um, you, I can track a history about both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because you'll recall in SAA when uh, I don't want to beg to Coleman Andrews just to tie with Cairo. With the hedging crisis uh, under yeah, Coleman Andrews. I don't want Andrews. to go back to that. You will know that, for instance, during Cairo and Wola Treasury provided him uh, with uh, money to for restructuring the institution, including the headcount. Yes. Uh, if we were to go back and say how many people were in SA at the time uh, of the start of the headcount, you'll probably find that we were back to where we were when Treasury were, uh, gave SA money. Yeah. So my sense is that when we, we had, a, after that, 
good monitors that uh, did some work very well and SAA was on right track. Again, it, it went back. My yeah. sense is that these issues have got to do with management and accountability. May I ask you a question with regard to ESCOM? Mm. There was a time when ESCOM's sovereign, when ESCOM's credit rating, its was own credit rating, was even piercing higher. the sovereign's yeah. credit rating. Yeah. And there was a time around 2003 where Tulang Dabasha constantly warned um, National Treasury that we need to urgently recapitalize ESCOM because we would run out of excess capacity. That time came and passed. So shouldn't we, the people who failed to recapitalize um, ESCOM at a critical and at an opportune time, take some of the blame? I, I'm coming to no, the issues no, 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 of no. corruption. No, but no, 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 yeah. Come back to that. I mean, there's been uh, policy mishaps. Uh, you know, ESCOM used to be amongst the top ten in the world. Yeah. Right? There has been m a policy mishaps. Let me just give you an example. In 1998, when we introduced the notion of, of private sector, when we, we had what was called the white paper, which said 70% ESCOM, 30% will be private sector, but we didn't create the national regulatory framework, which would have allowed the private sector to come and play in that 30% space. That's why then, by 2003, uh, the, we were beginning to see the challenges that were beginning, um, and that's why Gabash had to make the point. Hence, government in 2004 had to make a decision that we've got to, to uh, Pescom is going to go for a new build instead of allowing for private sector. So there has been some policy mishaps, no doubt about that. And what about the corruption? Can I ask you a bit of a controversial question about mm. the, the moral decay within the governing party, spilling over perhaps into the, the, the ethos, the values of institutions in outer society, and the SOEs being partly a victim of a degenerating culture within the ruling party? No, I mean, no one would deny that over the past few years, there has been a degeneration in terms of value system uh, of our party and that spilled over into government. There not, not, no doubt about that. Uh, and, uh, so in, ef in effect, the moral hazard was within the heart of the ruling party. That's the point I'm considering. I'm saying that has been uh, the problem. It would be in, uh, wrong not to accept that fundamental problem. And that's what the, precisely the, uh, the reason why you see now that the series of commissions to try and investigate what went wrong and how do we mind you some of these commissions are not only about what uh, about the uh, who we did what yes. but about how do we begin and uh, make recommendation of uh, strengthening our institution a democratic institution so that we don't have a repeat of, of, of this okay talking about solutions i'd like you to play this little game with me um, I always say that I'm not the originator of this game. It's Krivani Pillay, my colleague, who came along with these wonderful mechanisms for um, just asking South Africans what they feel about the management of this economy mm. and about various ideas. Mm. So we'll be taking these bats into the election period, so we're trying them out on people like yourselves. Okay. So thank you for joining us and for playing this game. If you completely disagree with a notion, mm. show me red. Mm. If you agree, show me green. Mm. If you are really indifferent and lukewarm, show <laughs> me yellow. <laughs> I'm happy you're into this game. Um, Mr. Godongwan, uh. do you agree with the idea that was announced by the Minister of Finance that um, prior to being given a bailout, a chief restructuring officer must be appointed. Very green. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's precisely because from an early starting point of moral hazard that we should not be encouraging that any assistance should be uh, uh, accompanied by uh, a restructuring and condition attached to it. If a any bailout which is not accompanied by any conditions were in encouraging moral hazard. Okay. Do you agree that privatization is not ANC policy, yes or no? 
uh, privatization is not ANC policy. Remember, uh, you've got the yellow card. Let me give you the yellow card. Why? You're ambiguous. Ah, no, I'm not ambiguous. Because I want to tell you what ANC policy is. <laughs> ANC policy said in 1992 in a document called Ready to Govern. We are not going to be religious about privatization or, or nationalization. We will be guided by what is called balance of evidence. In that sense, you don't come up and say uh, privatization or no privatization. The ANC policy says we must be guided by what? Balance of evidence. Which is practicality in Which other words. Which is practicality in other words. Okay, on that pragmatic note, mm. I ask you the last question. Do what, you think... What about if you ask me the last question? Uh, can I go back and take green? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that um, the SOEs should be given kind of stringent controls like the Chinese gave their SOEs, which is they give them debt to revenue ratios that cannot be breached without mm. penalties. Do you think that's a good notion that we should introduce? I suspected that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, let, again, going back to moral hazard, people must be given performance indicators that says you must at all times stick to those performance indicators for anything else, if you can't meet the performance indicators, you must go back and explain why, so that you, you know, you know, the government must be able to, to understand. So I agree with Strin. It may not be the same terms, but I agree with that. Thank you very much, Mr. Kodongwana. I've really enjoyed playing this game with you. I enjoyed the game as well. And now let's go to an ad break. Stay with us, please.